conscious control, attributed to Dr. Carter G. Woodson. Trapped and trained to think with somebody else's mind, caught up in the method of the madness by master design, MAs, JDs, and MSs, an MBA and a PhD. Without the knowledge of self, don't mean a thing to me. It's all ignorant academics at its best, and like the educated fool, full of BS. Highly miseducated misfits will keep you chained and bound, and every time you try to get up, they'll pull you back down. Symptoms of the sickness of the soul is simply miseducation by conscious control. Hi, I'm Danny Queen, and I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Color Me Poetry. I'd like to welcome my most uh, illustrious guest, Mr. Ronald Steele, president of the African American uh, Writers Guild. Yes, sir. How uh, you doing? Tell us about Tell us about the Writers Guild. Tell us about yourself first and who you are. Okay. My name is Ronald Steele. I am a journalist by trade. I am a public affairs specialist with the, with the uh, federal department. But in addition to that, I am a graduate from the University of the District of Columbia, specializing in communications, uh, print journalism, and I've been writing for the last 20 years. All right. Um, I'm also the president, as you mentioned, of the African American Writers Guild. We are a three and a half year old non, uh, uh, non-profit tax exempt uh, writers organization comprised of more than 200 writers who have come together, and they're writers of all different genres, who have come together to promote African American literature and literacy in our community. Mm, that's beautiful. What type of person would join uh, Writers Guild? What is the Writers Guild? I mean, what, why would I, as a writer, why would I want to join the Writers Guild? Uh, there are several reasons why, as a, a writer, you would want to join the, the African American Writers Guild. Number one is all people who are pursuing careers in advocation need to congregate with others who are like-minded, who are pursuing similar pursuits, or who are engaged in uh, similar pursuits. Um, there are things that you may find in your course that I may not and by us getting together we can exchange information so we network support network yes writers. yes and in addition to that um, we provide each other with all types of information that will be beneficial to all of us we also provide support services that help uh, uh, encourage uh, their pursuit whether it's readers many of our uh, members are readers teachers librarians some are songwriters some are poets some are novelists, some are historic nonfiction writers, uh, some are published, and some are aspiring to be published. So we've, we, we cover the whole spectrum, not only of writers, but people who are interested in the literary field. You do not have to be a writer. You do not have to be uh, a published writer to become a member of the African American Writers Guild. But we're probably the largest congregation of African American writers in one organization on the northeastern coast. How would one join the, the African American Writers Guild? Very easily. Uh, for your listening uh, uh, audience, um, the way to join the African American Writers Guild is to send a check for $25, $15 if you're a student or a senior citizen to the African American Writers Guild, P.O. Box 43874, um, Washington, D.C., 210. And just write on the memo section, new membership. We could send you a membership application, but we can bypass that process to help facilitate new membership. How was the guild established and, you know, the why guild, was established? Okay, the guild was established uh, three and a half years ago, as I mentioned before, by, principally by Marita Golden. Right. Marita Golden is a very prolific uh, novelist, and at that particular time, um, she was an up-and-coming writer, and she knew several other writers in Washington, D.C. And in her interest of creating this support network, she suggested that these uh, writers get together and put on a book fair at Union Temple Baptist Church. I remember. Yeah. Do you? Okay. I was there. Okay. Yeah. And there was such a tremendous response that after the book fair, they said, hey, we've, we've got something here, and let's take it further. And so um, that was the way the African American Writers Guild was established. And since then, we have grown to become, I mean, to, to uh, offer not only book fairs, but also a writer's workshop that meets regularly every Wednesday. We have a quarterly newsletter, which provide our membership with all types of information pertaining to awards and grants, what's happening among African American writers in the industry. Uh, just a chock full of uh, information. We also have a, uh, um, a book discussion group where members select a book, read the book, and come together on a regular basis to discuss these books. 
and we have a Meet the Author series where we bring in writers of uh, national, Such sir. Just who? Um, what writers have we brought in? We're getting ready to feature Helen Washington, Eugenia Collier. We've had Charles Johnson. We featured Marita Golden. We also used the Meet the Author series to help promote writers in the Guild. So we have also featured a number of writers within the Guild. We featured Keith Wright, who is the author of a health book. Um, uh, James Granger. Yes, um, James Granger. Yes. So. So um, we have featured a number of different uh, writers in our Meet the Author series. And it's an opportunity for aspiring writers or readers to not only meet the author, but engage with the author about the book, about the industry, or the process of writing. That's very important when you think about uh, the, what the uprising of the Afrocentric study groups in the area. Yeah. Uh, all that, I think, kind of comes together as a support network for writers and people who are in writing. Because a lot of the uh, study groups, you know, they have book lists. That's right. And they have certain books that they have to purchase. In this area, I think we have quite a few Afrocentric study groups. And how important is that, in, say, in conjunction with uh, what the African American Writers Guild do, does? It's extremely important. See, one of the, the, the biggest myths that, that kind of discourage African Americans pr from pursuing literary uh, uh, careers is uh, the myth that we don't like to read yeah, I heard that and that we don't, we don't like to write. When the fact of the matter is the first writing on Mother Earth was done by Africans, That's true. the hieroglyphics. Um, I mean, as we, as we know, we know them as the hieroglyphics. Um, and some of the most profound, some of the most uh, creative writers in America have been and are African-American writers. In Washington, D.C. alone, the Pyramid Bookstore has five different locations in That's the Washington evident. metropolitan area. That's evident. It's evident that we like to read because right. surely white folks are not buying those books. No. So the, the study groups, they, the study groups in the African American Writers Guild are like brothers. Uh, one begets the other. The study groups encourage uh, their uh, members to reclaim their natural history and heritage through all of the media, but specifically or, or primarily through literature. And as people begin to read more about their history and heritage, quite naturally, some are going to realize that they want to write too. They want to document just as others have before them. They want to document and write about their history and heritage or about whatever uh, entertains them. So I think that the study groups will not only encourage African Americans to reclaim their natural history and heritage, but also uh, make a lot of them realize that they are writers. How important is it for, for I mean, as a writer yourself, and I'm a writer, um, how important is it to, to read, for a writer to read? Because I, I, I know when I was in school, my teachers always said, if you want to be a good writer, you got to read and be a very mm -hmm. avid reader. You know, how okay. important is that for young writers? Oh, it's extremely important because all of us are born with potential. And us writers, we're probably born with the, the desire or the potential to write, or we may develop it along the way. Writing gives you the opportunity to see what the great writers have written before you. That's true. It's like uh, when Muhammad Ali said uh, before every great fight, he would watch the videotapes of former fighters or the videotapes of that fighter. You learn a lot just from being able to read what the great writers have written before you. And um, in addition to, to that, um, you also began to learn diff the different styles and you can pick and choose your own style. One other point I want to mention about the importance of reading for a writer is you may not have the resources that will enable you to travel, to go places, and to, f to get information. Um, but through reading, you, you can, can go, go almost anywhere in your mind. And, there's, and it's probably just as good as being there. And it's almost free. <laughs> and it's almost free. That's right. Yeah, that's true. So um, reading is very important to, to the developing writer. But in addition to reading, the writer must write. The writer must write. Every day, if possible, if for only 15 minutes a day, the writer must write every day because um, writing helps make the writer a writer. Who are some of the, your favorite writers, poets, lyricists, songwriters uh, that you can think of? Okay. Um, some of my famous, I mean, my favorite writers are, of course, uh, um, um, uh, the brother who wrote The Stolen Legacy, George G.M. James. Yeah, Dr. James. Mm -hmm. um, I read a lot of historic nonfiction. Um, um, in addition to him, Chancellor Williams. Yes. Ivan Van Sertema. Destruction of the Black Civilization. Yes. Dr. Ben. Um, some people read, you know, uh, coffee table novels for entertainment. Well, I read historic nonfiction for entertainment. It entertains me as well as uh, informs me. 
So uh, those are pretty much some of my favorite uh, oh, yeah. writers. I, I love all those people also, and I've written many, many, and continue to do so. But I also like people like Richard Wright and Langston Hughes mm -hmm. and the Mar Angelos. I, used, sure. I grew up with Nicky Giovanni, you know, okay. <laughs> people like that. So, yeah, I used to love all the, and still do love all that kind of stuff. I love the Langston Hughes because he was, he was such a talent. He was a man of letters, a renaissance man, if you will. Yes. Uh, because of the type of thing. I mean, he not only wrote poetry, he wrote songs, plays. Uh, one of my favorite, I've mentioned many times before, and that was the character of Just Be Simple. Yes. That Langston Hughes. Because, I mean, Tremendous he is such a, I mean, such a personality. Yeah. It's like the average person that you meet on the street. Yeah. On the street. Uh, 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 Hughes had a, such a way with using simple as a mouthpiece. Yes. To say things that he would maybe not ordinarily say. Right. So I think that's, that's very, very important that, uh, that we support our writers and and uh, that we look up to them as, hero as heroes because mm -hmm. they are our heroes. That's we have right. no other heroes. All too often, we are, because of our exposure and misinformation, we're led to believe that writers are uh, bookworms. They're people who, uh, who are solitary for the most part, and they're scholarly, academic, and, and uh, almost nerdy types. Um, <laughs> writers have a very, very important role in, in our history and heritage because they have documented the truth. And, 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 and as old as our history is, they, because they have documented, they make our history present for us. They, they give us access to things that have happened before us hundreds, if not thousands of years the before. The griot. Yes, yeah, the griot. And tradition. That's right. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, writers are all kinds of people. I mean, they're laid back, they're, they're partying people. Writers are all kinds of people. They just choose to write to help preserve our history and heritage or to entertain uh, their readers. Do you write from a personal perspective or do you sometimes write, sometimes secondhand, or maybe you're close to someone who experienced something and you write mm -hmm. from that? Or is it always first-hand experience for you? Well, for me, uh, being a journalist, uh, I generally write uh, from from both areas. Um, I write about things that are going on, so there is that objective uh, writing that I do, and there's also the very subjective writing. I write sometimes from my own personal experience, and I write from the personal experience of others. Mm, that's very important. I sometimes, uh, I sometimes do it all. I, I have a tendency to, you know, I read a lot and well, I, I talk and I meet with people. I mean, you, you can get ideas, because sometimes people say to me, writers say to me, well, I can't think of anything to write about. Yeah. But there's, there's billions of things all around you Absolutely. that you can draw from and draw upon as inspiration. Yeah. Uh, reading, uh, just children. There's sure. just so many things that you can draw upon. Inspiration is all around you. All you have to do is just go inside of yourself and pull yeah. it out. Yeah, and that's where writing bec uh, becoming a practice, if not a habit, becomes instrumental. Because the more you write, the more you become sensitive to writing, and those ideas begin to flow. I mean, I have a problem now with having too many things to write about, yeah. <laughs> and not yeah. enough time. You don't know which direction. Yeah, I had that problem. I, there's just so many things that I want to deal with. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I, I lose a sense of direction there. So you have to. It's also a part of focusing in mm -hmm. on what do you want to deal with at, at, at a particular time. Yeah, and I've written poetry over the years. I've written short stories. Um, but I have not uh, endeavored to get them published. I have primarily uh, pursued getting my journalism uh, published. Mm -hmm. And um, a couple of articles I've written have been, for example, uh, African Americans Know Thyself, which is a major uh, essay on the need for African Americans to know their history and heritage and the benefit of knowing the history and heritage in terms of countering a lot of the negative behavior that um, um, that we seem in golf in, oh, some of us seem in golf in today. It's beautiful. Brother, it's certainly great having you here. And I'm Danny Queen, and we're going to be right back with some more. Here he comes. Whoops. Ooh. I beg your pardon. Ralph Edwards. Yes, that's right, McGruff. It's the 10th anniversary of all of us working together to prevent crime. McGruff, this is your life. What a thrill! Years ago, you began teaching people to get involved with each other and the police. Remember this? You helped us start a neighborhood watch. Our antennas went up and crime went down. Hey, Phil! How you doing, McGruff? Ha, ha. Later, you helped kids stay drug-free. Why don't we get wasted? Why don't you get real? I've got a better idea. Why don't you get lost? Hi, McGruff. Hey, McGruff. You guys may be proud. Come on, everybody. It's been a great 10 years, but there's more to do. Clean up neighborhoods, 
make drugs disappear. How do you start? Write for my free booklet. Now, everybody say, take, take a, a bite, bite out of crime. Crime Dog McGruff, this is your life. Couldn't do it without you. Hi, I'm Danny Queen, and welcome back to Color Me Poetry. I'd like to welcome back my guest, Mr. Ronald Steele, who's the president of the African American Writers Guild. Ronald, let's talk about uh, the benefits of joining the African American Writers Guild. Great. The benefits of joining the African American Writers Guild are many. Uh, one of which, of course, is um, our quarterly newsletter, mm -hmm. which, as I mentioned earlier, gives you all type, give writers and readers all type of inf types of information pertaining to awards and grants that are available to writers, um, different types of writing contests. It also gives um, the writers information about what other African American writers are doing in the industry. It also gives a lot of information about the literary industry or the publishing industry. And it also uh, commemorates or recognizes the members of the African American Writers Guild who are getting their work published or who are appearing in the media to promote um, their work. Well, that's definitely a great benefit when you think that's, about it. That's one of them. The other benefits are 10% off on all books purchased at Pyramid Bookstore. That is a big benefit because depending on the number of books that a member might mm -hmm. publish in a year, um, they could reap back their membership dues just that's through right. discounts from purchasing books at Pyramid Bookstore. You also get up to 30% off on a variety of different activities that the Guild sponsors. And you also have free access to a writer's workshop, which is extremely important, important to any aspiring writer. Yes. And many writer's workshops may charge from $80 or more, and it will be limited to only six months of uh, access. Whereas with your $25 uh, membership dues uh, to the African American Writers Guild, you're entitled to uh, have access to that writer's workshop, which meets every Wednesday and is ad infinitum. That's great because that, that, that helps to build the, uh, the circle of the network yes. for doing things that we need to do as African-American writers. How is the Guild funded? The Guild, I'm glad you asked that question. The Guild is a nonprofit, tax exempt organization. We are funded primarily by dues. And um, we are not engaged in uh, a variety of different fundraising activities as of yet, but we're working on them. Um, but we are primarily funded by membership dues and that's why it's so important for everybody who's listening now to join the African American Writers Guild to help keep this, in this, this entity uh, alive. And um, we're also funded by the support of our members. It is a volunteer organization. It is staffed by volunteers. And the life of the membership really depends on membership dues and the uh, generosity of our members who volunteer to staff various committees. You have members in the Guild who uh, self-publish. Let's talk about the business of uh, people who self-publish and some of the things you have to go through, copyright. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of young people watching, a lot of young writers watching who may know, who want to know more okay. about that. We have several members in the Guild who are self-published. Um, there is James Granger, um, who is the author of Mo. Adam and the Altaic, Adam, the Altaic Ring and the mm -hmm. Children of the Sun, Mo, right. and the Black Man's Bible. There is Nikichi Taifa, who is the author of Shining Legacy. Uh, it's very important for aspiring writers to know um, as much as they possibly can about the business of publishing. It's not enough just to be able to produce a, a, a piece of art. Mm -hmm. Someone has got to get that piece of art to the marketplace, and that's usually a publisher. Even if they don't plan to publish the book themselves, they should at least be knowledgeable about the publishing industry so they can interface intelligently with a publisher. But um, most African American writers you will find are self-published. Yeah, that's true. And Why? It's, and it's Why not that? because they want to go into publishing business, but because most of what we write pertains to our experience. And it just so happened that the majority of the publishers in this country are European controlled and owned, and they are not interested in not publishing into. work mm -hmm. that pertains to our culture unless it is projected through their stereotype. So African Americans have run up to these, run up into these white walls uh, very frequently and have resolved that instead of me trying to rewrite my work to fit their filters, I would just publish it myself. And, um, and that's a credit to, to them, of course, uh, for having the tenacity and the merit 
to uh, pursue getting their work published in spite of the rejection they may get from the uh, European uh, American publishing houses. Unlike uh, which we have in the, uh, in the recording industry, a Motown, you know, a big company, you know, whose uh, products all over the world, is distribution and that type of thing. Uh, we don't have that in the public industry uh, as far as black. No, we don't. Not yet. And uh, we do, however, have several black publishing houses. There's Third World Press mm -hmm. in Chicago. Chicago. Right. Howard University has a press, Black Classics Press in Baltimore. There are a number of African-American publishers. However, they are small presses. And one of the reasons for that, um, I believe, is that when African Americans are ready to get published, uh, just as uh, Carter G. Woodson so eloquently underlined That's in true. The Miseducation of the Negro, uh, in which he documented how Eurocentric we are oriented, many African American writers go to white publishing houses to get their book published, rather than seeking out African-American publishers and accepting whatever sacrifices they have to help contribute to the growth of these publishing houses. Instead, they go to white publishing houses and if their books are successful, then not only are the individual, is the individual writer successful, but also that publishing house will, will grow, grow yeah. as a result of your work. So if big names, so in other words, if big name people who in the African-American community uh, say like, uh, for instance, a Bill Cosby mm -hmm. or you know, someone of that stature would, would, uh, would uh, give their manuscript to, say, like a, a, a Third World Press or Red Sea Press out of New Jersey. That would help an awful that lot. That would be a tremendous boost. In fact, uh, big name people such as Bill Cosby, and there are others, their name is so uh, prominent right. that if they put a book or a manuscript with any publishing house, the book is going to sell. So it would have been in the best interest of the collective community if Bill Cosby had a went to a third world press. The book would have sold millions of copies Regardless. anyway, mm -hmm. and it would have helped to uh, strengthen and grow a black publish house. Whereas, of course, he went to a white publishing house, who was, which was already successful, and um, his book only helped to make them more successful. His name would have sold a million copies. Absolutely. So that's, that's very important. I think yeah. that's what it's going to take, that kind of commitment mm -hmm. from our own people. Absolutely. In order to build uh, those, those uh, paramount companies that we need to distribute uh, worldwide That's right. in the African-American community. The literary community is just like every other sector in American society. It's a microcosm of what's going on throughout the society. And if more African-Americans were prepared to make a commitment to black publishing houses, we would have a black uh, heart course embrace uh, publishing house. We'll, we'll have a black Simon and Shuster. We will have a black major mm -hmm. publishing industry. But unfortunately, most of the big name African American publishers publish with white press rather than black press. Well, that's why I think also it comes back again to to the Guild and what the Guild does. And and thank God for people like uh, Brother Hadari Ali of Pyramid Bookstore because he's opened a lot of outlets to a lot of self-published authors in this area. Uh, to get their work out. I mean, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. You could go through and just find how many uh, African-American artists mm -hmm. and authors are published through Pyramid Bookstore. That's true. That they've done themselves. That's so true. He is really a godsend, I mean, because if Pyramid wasn't there, we would be lost. See, most African-Americans believe that you can get the majority of black literature from a Crown Bookstore or from uh, a Trover Bookshop or other right. um, uh, mainstream or, or, or majority community bookstore. And that is not the case. You go in there and you won't find these books. So if it wasn't for Pyramid Bookstore, right. we would probably not even hear about the James Granger, the Nikichi Taifa, uh, and the other African-American writers who are writing fantastic literature right. for us. Pyramid makes it accessible to us. So, so today we have no excuse for not having access to that information because Pyramid is there. Mm. And Reed C. Press is there. Reed C., yeah. yeah. That's, that's another one that we overlooked also, because they're at all the uh, Afrocentric lectures and that mm -hmm. type of thing. And they carry a, a great deal of uh, the authors. And they also have mail order mm -hmm. uh, uh, press sent up the, uh, set up so that they can uh, send books all across the country. So that's very important. And all, about it, all that has to do with uh, supporting and being a part of the African American Writers Guild, I, I think. Uh, because it is important that we get our work out. It's important that we work together and come together as a community to do the things that we need to do for self. And doing for self is, is so important when you think about what it is, the conditions of our people that we've been in. Uh, not only, in, like you said, not only in the publishing industry, but mm -hmm. <laughs> through every industry in, in America. So 
Another thing I'd like to focus in uh, quickly is that uh, the business uh, aspect of publishing a little more and um, as opposed to the creative side because a lot of people think well if I can just produce a, a creative uh, masterpiece then that's all I need to do but how important to young people anyway is, is that uh, not only to have the creative but to have at least a business system take some business courses some basic business courses uh, to help you better understand the business that mm -hmm. publishing business is just that business it is a business it's a six billion dollar industry mm -hmm. and um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it is not enough to just to create that product because whether you plan to publish it or not, you're going to have to deal with a publisher because once you create the art, then the art has to be delivered to the marketplace. Right. And if you, even if you're not planning to publish your book, you need to know about publishing so that you can interface intelligently with a publisher. Otherwise, you can end up with exorbitant rates and not really earn any income from your book. Also, uh, it's also, while we're talking about the business side of publishing, it's also important to know that this is not a get-rich uh, quick step. organization or, or get-rich-quick uh, industry. Most writers in America do not live off their books. That's true. And that needs to be, uh, 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 I can't say that enough. Uh, most uh, uh, very, very prominent uh, African-American writers live in part off their book, but primarily off of professorships. That is, okay. they're generally teaching at colleges and yeah, universities. Mm -hmm. Most people who write and get published do so because they feel like they have something that's very important that needs to be said and needs to be heard. And they are committed to getting the word out. Now, if by chance you earn some income as a result... You can live off of it. That's wonderful. Yeah. But that is not the primary goal of African-American writers, unless you're going to write the commercial fare that you get out of Hollywood uh, or, or off of, uh, you know, television. Well, there are writers who uh, live off of lectures and, and lecturing and, and the college lecture circuit and that kind of thing. Nick Giovanni, I think, is one of those, those people, but I think they're few in number. <laughs> yeah. And Nick Giovanni is a uh, professor at, I believe, George Washington University. If not oh, George yeah. Washington, it's some university in Virginia. Oh, so, okay. So yeah. she's, she's also yeah. a professor. Ishmael yeah. Reed is also a professor. Uh, Alice Walker, I believe she teaches. Marita Golden teaches. Yeah, Marita teaches. Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, the books... You have to do that. Yeah, the books do supplement your income, but you have to write uh, a major, major, major commercial piece mm -hmm. full of all the stereotypes, <laughs> crime, sex, drugs, the whole, bit. The whole gamut mm -hmm. in order to have a, uh, Success. a commercially successful book whereby you can live off it. Or you can do something as controversial as Shahrazad Ali did. And uh, I, th I think she, she just may have made enough money from that book to live off it. She probably was teaching before, too, <laughs> I, I've heard this said. Mm -hmm. uh, but she's... Uh, she does well with her.